Mr. Coates, don't downgrade people's position and people's lives. Joe to be listed in text gang, Your Honor. That was based on tattoos identified at the Bear County Jail and a denial in 2019. Er. All right, court is calling. 2019 CR 5880, State of Texas versus Samantha Nicole Sadania. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel S. Clark from the state of Texas. Defense? Andres Campy from the Southern. Are you Samantha Nicole Sadania? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Samantha Nicole Sadania who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2019 CR 5880 for the offense of intoxication assault on October 28, 2020 for a period of five years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State? Violated condition number 16 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Samantha Nicole Saldana, has been in there, failed to comply with the rules, regulations, or instructions of transdermal alcohol monitoring, in that the device was tampered with from August 13th to 2023 at 4.07 p.m. until August 14, 2023 at 12.13 a.m. in violation of condition number 16. Did you say August 23 or August? Oh, uh, August 13th, sorry, 2023. Wait, August 13th? To August. August 13th to August 14th. All right, I don't have that in my motion. That's Yeah, that was the motion of the idea. So I like the first one. This one? Yes. Okay. All right, it just says August 1st through August 31st. No. I'm... Oh, you're reading from the first violation of 16. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, LaShawn. You were right there to say, here it is. No. Yes, there is. All right. Uh, how do you plead to that? True or not true? True. State? Your Honor, the state waives all the violations. Any objection? No objections, Your Honor. All right. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 16, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 16? Yes. Court will find violation of 16 true. Is there a proposed agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Altered amendment for uh, 90 days of scram plus regular and random UAs and ETDs and a zero tolerance. Yeah, I, I really don't do zero tolerance. Is that the proposed agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor, with the caveat that if uh, yeah. if there are no positive readings from the UATGs after the 90 days, that that requirement and the scram requirement be removed, I think is the... And that's, that's correct. All right. And we have uh, Kiana Neal on Zoom. Could you unmute, please? Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? I do. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Kiana Neal. All right. Any objections to the witness appearing by Zoom state? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, Your Honor. All right. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Your Honor, I think we'd spoken with uh, the probation officer earlier, but if the court has any questions, the state wouldn't object. All right, so uh, probation, are you in agreement with this recommendation from both the state and the defense? I don't, I don't know if she was present with me. They're asking that she be continued and that she be placed on SCRAM and do sober support meetings. You're right, I think the, the UA and ETG testing and uh, for, she's already on SCRAM, to continue to SCRAM. Yes. So what are your recommendations? My recommendation is that she stay on, um, continue on SCRAM and um, a TAP evaluation, follow any and all recs um, from TAP. Um, she's eligible to get the device removed if she has two consecutive months of zero um, tampers or bracts. All right, so somebody explained to me, what is this tampering? Was it tampered with or is there something else going on? So Judge, as far as we can tell, we reached out to RMS uh, yesterday and what they can gather is that there's something that was going in between the sensor and the defendant's leg. Uh, they can't say what it is. Uh, we're still able to get regions from it. It, it can still detects some things. There was some detection of alcohol, but we can't quantify or say. It just says detected. All right, when they say something between 
the device in her leg? Do they mean there was material between it or is there something with the reading? They, they couldn't elaborate. So the way that it was described, the way I understood it, Your Honor, was that uh, Recovery Monitoring Solutions gets their some information from a subcontracted company called AMS. And the reading that Recovery Monitoring Solutions gets is that the, there was a tamper with the device. They're, they could not tell us what the quantifiable definition or criteria was to make something to be considered tampering. We tried to call AMS. AMS told us that their contract was not with the county and that they couldn't discuss it with the DA's office, but they could discuss it with Recovery Monitoring Solutions. So we went back and tried to have them set up a meeting, but we were unsuccessful in getting that done prior to this. All right. Is there anything else from either side? No, no, nothing from the defense, Your Honor. We just all right. The court uh, thank you so much for zooming in. This is what the court is going to do. Uh, the court notes that since you were placed on probation in 2020, this is your first motion to revoke. Uh, the court is finding 16 true. Court will deny the motion. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to alter and amend conditions for uh, continued scram until further notice. And there's gonna be the UA hotline for 45 days. And make sure that there's a testing for alcohol just as a safety gap. Yes, ma'am. And I'm gonna do 60 uh, sober meetings in 60 days. Is there anything else from either side? No, you're not. Uh, Probation? Judge, I would like to um, continue and go ahead and get the tap done as well. All right, there's gonna be a tap evaluation. Uh, follow TAP recommendations. If TAP recommends inpatient treatment, then you all can come back here and we'll address it. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Judge, I just want to urge the court to admonish Ms. Saldana only because we had a compliance hearing in regards to the device um, and there still seems to be some type of issue there. All right. Uh, I'm going to admonish her in just a second. Uh, Ms. Neal, is there anything else? No, no, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much for Zooming in. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. We're going to go off the record. Here's the thing. This is probation. You're looking at 10 years in prison. You understand? So... You had better make sure that there is no more tampering with this device and state. If there's more tampering or alleged tampering with the device, what's going to end up happening is whoever is with the company that is not hired by the county, they'll need to come in and we'll, we'll have a hearing. And so the next time, or there should not be a next time, but if this were to happen again, then what's going to end up? happening is I'm going to want all the parties who have anything to do with the scram equipment you're wearing to either be here in person or be here by zoom, but you are looking at 10 years in prison. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else? Uh, Your honor, my, the, the concern that I have is the uh, sort of support meetings. Um, Ms. Saldana does not have a vehicle and she does not have internet at her. Oh, there, there's sober support meetings everywhere. Do you have a cell phone? I'm sure that cell phone has internet on it, does it not? No, she's saying, yes, it does. So there we go. Everybody's cell phone has internet on it. How old are you? 32. All right, she's 32. She's young. She can make it happen. There's the library. There's via bus. And last time I checked, I believe the library downtown, the library all over the cities of city has internet access for people who don't have internet access. Am I incorrect on that? Where there's a will, there's a way. I always tell people, if it's important, you treat it like it's important. The most important thing for you right now should be this probation. You know why? Because you're looking at possibly 10 years in prison. You understand? Yeah. And who is Anthony? He's my husband. All right. So You've done that. There's no way to undo it unless you do a cover up. Here's my advice to people. People always want to put other people's names on their bodies. You know what the safe bet to put a name on your body? Love you, mom, your children or yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you and Anthony, something were to happen and you get divorced and you meet somebody else, what are you going to tell that guy? Oh, that's my uh, child. You know, so there you go.
I hope he has his name, your name on his body. He does. In bolds where everybody can see it. All right, good luck to you. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Court is calling 2023 CR 4941, State of Texas versus Anthony Tyrone Jack Woodard. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Myers, Your Honor. For the defense? Defense for Mr. Woodard. And are you Mr. Woodard? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. All right, we're here for sentencing. You entered a plea of guilty on February 12th. <clears throat> According to your plea bargain agreement, uh, the state is uh, silent on your application. And of course, they say that if you did not appear, uh, you would be subject to the full range of punishment. So you're here. So that's a good thing. And also, uh, you're going open to the court in the sense with regards to punishment. That's right, Judge. All right. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report and the TAP evaluation? State has, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Any objections? No objections. All right. The state is silent. Uh, you say you have a witness? I do, Judge. I call his girlfriend, Tamisha, first. All right. Mr. Woodard. I'm sorry. Mr. Coons, don't downgrade people's position and people's lives. Good morning. Could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yeah. All right, you can lower your hand. Just make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear. All right, and uh, on this side, if you are gonna talk, ask the deputy just move you down to the other end. If you'll state your name for the record. Tamisha Jackson. All right. Tamisha, who are you to Anthony? Um, his girlfriend. And what do you do for a living? I work at Waste Connections for the city. How long have you? Waste Connections. For the city of San Antonio? Yes. Okay. And how long have you been there? Uh, four and a half years. What sort of hours do you work? Uh, from 7 to 7.30. So you 7 a.m. to 7 uh, p.m. So 12 hour shifts? Yes. How many days a week? Monday through Friday. Do you have children? One. How old is your child? 13. And does she stay with you? Yes. Does, does Anthony have children? Yes. How many children does Anthony have? Three. And what are their ages? Uh, one just turned six on Monday. One will be five next month. And one just turned five in March. What kind of father is Anthony to those children? Uh, an active father. Um, he's proactive with any activities going on with school, outside of school. Um, there is a routine um, from Thursday to Sunday with the parents um, of the other children um, that he gives them every other weekend. Um, but with my daughter specifically, um, he's full active. Um, I'm honest, be honest with you, I'm not on none of her paperwork. He does all the activities, um, parent conference, because I can't honestly do it because I'm at work the majority of the time. Um, so that's pretty much scary. So he's he's a good dad. Yes. And he helps you out a lot. Yes. Now, we obviously are asking the judge for a, a huge favor today, which is to give him a chance on probation, right? Correct. And you know Anthony's history, don't you? Yes. He, he's been to prison before. Correct. and And he's struggled with some things, hasn't he? Correct. What, do you think Anthony can make it on probation? I do. Um, as far as with um, the classes, he, I think, I believe he was on probation before and he finished all the classes. Um, I think he was reporting like every week or once a month to be honest with you. I'm not for sure how his rotation was, but I know he was pretty active with um, mm -hmm. reporting. Do you, are you aware of Anthony's childhood and background? Um, yes. And, and the trauma that he suffered as a child? Yes. Both of his parents were addicts. Yes. His mother was a prostitute. Yes, and passed away while he was incarcerated. Yes. And he was raised by a grandma. Yes. And, but even to this day, would it be fair to say that Anthony suffers from depression and maybe some other issues? Correct. In childhood, yes. And do you think he needs psychological counseling? Do you think he needs uh, drug rehab or classes or something like yes, that? Yes, like childhood trauma, yes. Right. And I know you're not, thankfully, you're not versed in the drug world. Yes, right? I'm not because I'm not right about it. Yeah. So, but you do feel like Anthony struggles maybe with substances at, some, at times. Correct, yes. And do you think that him getting counseling or treatment would be a good thing? Yes. But realistically, it probably stems from the depression and the childhood the trauma. trauma. Yes. Okay. So he probably needs counseling to start with that and, and move forward. Correct. Right? Yes. Um, if he's able to get probation, do you think he'll follow the rules? Yes. Is he a rule mm -hmm. follower? Yes. 
I have more, so yeah, I can follow my rule. <laughs> and um, is there anything else you'd like to tell the judge? Obviously, you're with Anthony. He's helping you raise your own child, and, right. and you care for him a lot, don't yeah. you? Yes. And you want her to give him a chance? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. The prosecutor may ask you a couple of questions, but that's okay. All right, any questions? Briefly, Your Honors. Um, you were aware that Anthony was on parole at the time of his arrest, correct? Um, oh, which, which? I'm sorry? Oh, which case? On, on the case we're here for today. Uh, no, I don't think he was on parole. I don't believe so. I don't, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, and... You were aware that there was 4.1 grams of cocaine found in the house? Um, I actually was um, at work, so I didn't get the call until in the process of it happening. Okay. Yeah. Were you aware that there were several firearms found in the house? Um, there was not several. One weapon was actually a BB gun that was actually mine. Um, and the other weapon, I don't believe anything about another weapon. And when I talked to the officer, he actually gave me a written of yeah, everything. Dan, I'm, I'm going to stop you there. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No, Judge. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming down. And Judge, I'll call my client as a witness. All right. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Yes, Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Anthony Woodard. All right. Defense. Thank you, Judge. Anthony, you heard Tamisha talk and, and you heard what I was saying. I want to talk to the judge a little bit about your background and, and your childhood. And I know you, you struggle to talk about this. You don't like talking about this, do you? And in fact, I didn't learn some of the stuff about you until very recently. Is that right? Yes, sir. You, you kind of hold it in, don't you? Yes, sir. But unfortunately, both of your parents were drug addicts. Is that right? Yes, sir. And uh, you were raised by a grandma because they were they couldn't take care of you. Yes, sir. Were they living on the streets? Yes, sir. And you heard me mention also that that unfortunately your mom was a prostitute. Is that right? Yes, sir. W and was she in the same neighborhood you were at? Yes, sir. Was, so you've seen her do what? Oh, I understand. Okay. So you, unfortunately, as a child, were exposed to her business, right? Yes. And... Look, we, we have to, the judge knows, and, and you're very honest about things. You started getting in trouble when you are in high school, didn't you? Yes, sir. And probably some anger issues and sadness and depression things, right? Yes, sir. Now, you've unfortunately found yourself in prison a couple of times and things like that, and, and you're back in the court system. Is Are you happy to be back in the court system? Yes, sir. I Is this something that you like doing it? You know, every few years coming to court. Yes, sir. And and now that you have your children, is this really hard on you? Yes, sir. It takes a real toll on me. Is this something that you ever want to do again? Oh, sir. Do you ever want to be back in front of a judge? Oh, sir. And how many times have you come to court and watch Judge Boyd? A bunch? A bunch of times. And and you know that she can be very she can be very tough on people, but she can also be very uh, uh, thoughtful and kind in what she's yes. doing, right? Yes, sir. And you've commented on it sometimes and just you've, she's been so good to people that you've seen right in front of her, right? Yes, sir. You're asking for mercy from her, aren't you? Yes, sir. And you can understand why a prosecutor or maybe some judges yes. might not think that you're deserving of any mercy. Could you understand that? I understand that. Do you promise that you're going to change your ways and do a better job? If you took a drug test today, would you be clean or dirty? I'd be dirty. For what? Uh, and, but clean for marijuana, oh, yes, clean for cocaine. Yes, sir. But do you feel like you could use some counseling? Oh, yes, sir. And do you think that counseling for, for your depression? It, yes? Yes, sir. Counseling for alcohol or drug use? Yes, sir. Are you willing to do that counseling? I'm willing to do it. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You just don't want to go back to prison, do you? No, oh, sir. You've been to prison. Yes, sir. And you don't like it, do you? No, oh, sir. And I want to address one thing. Anthony, when you've been in prison, have you been categorized as a gang member? No, sir. 
So when probation says that they have you as a, as a blood and all this sort of stuff, you actually wear blue to court a lot of times, don't you? In black, yes, sir. And so you're not affiliated with the, any gang right now, are you? No, sir. And you haven't been? I don't been... in prison or none of that. That's why oh. I don't know where they come from. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the judge? Yes, sir. I would ask uh, if you can give me a second chance to prove to you that I can be successful on probation for my family and myself and give me any help. And I wouldn't want to take it and show the board that uh, I can be successful. Uh, okay. okay. Any questions? Mr. Woodard, uh, the, the time you were arrested, you were on parole for a uh, drug case, correct? Yes, sir. And parole's kind of like probation when she agreed. Yes, sir. And got rules you have to follow. If you don't, you may or may not go to prison. Yes, sir. And you were high the day you were arrested, correct? Was I high? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And you admitted to smoking marijuana. Is that a violation of your parole? Mm -hmm. I had completed parole. Well, would you be surprised that it says that you weren't going to be discharged until May 27, 2023, and that you were arrested on March 28, oh, yeah, 2023? Yes, sir. I had a one. You're right. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. So Correct. Smoking marijuana would have been a violation, correct? Correct. And uh, being around any sort of narcotics would have been a violation, correct? Correct. Okay. And being around guns would have been a violation of the parole, correct? Correct, sir. And uh, you've been on bond for this case, correct? Yes, sir. And would you say that bond's kind of like a, a version of probation as well? You have certain rules you have to follow? Yes, sir. And drinking alcohol, that's a violation of your bond. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, you're allowed to drink alcohol while you're on bond? For a drug case? Yes, sir. I don't, I don't think that's a violation of my being on bond, sir. Okay. How many AA meetings have you been to in the last month? Um, I haven't, I haven't been to one since about six days. You have, uh, you have several children, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you've been, at the time that this report was written, you've been unemployed for 11 months, correct? Yes, sir. Where are you working now? Um, I struggle with getting another job right now due to the situation. So I just help out at the non poppy safe house for the community. Okay. Did you bring any sort of documentation from that? I, I actually do have something I was going to present to the court. Okay. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Anthony, let's talk about that real fast. Uh, it's Big Mama's Safe House? Yes, sir. And what is that? It's a non profit uh, uh, community. Stop the violence with the drugs and uh, put the weapons down and talk. It's like a non profit. And so, you, as someone who's been through that fire, basically, yes, sir. They, are you are you helping the the younger people to try to learn from your mistakes? Well, yeah, we go to communities and talk to uh, like in the neighborhoods or east side. We start and talk to the, the children about the violence and the drugs and to like go a different route about it, which is the change that I'm making for myself that I want to see. I don't want to see a lot of people go down the same path I went down. I'm in the prison. Okay, all right. So so let me stop everybody. If we can go off the record briefly, let me just tell you what my concern is. My concern is I'm looking at his criminal history. My other concern that is pushing me a certain way is this allegation that you say is an allegation that he's a gang member. So we can have him sit in the box and you all can discuss about that gang tag that's on the report. Then you all can come back and approach me with information on that. And then I'll have a ruling on that. I actually, just to let you know, I spoke to the prosecutor before we came up here and they don't, he doesn't know necessarily why he has tagged as a as a blood right now okay so let's do this let's have him sit in the box i think you guys have investigators upstairs who can go on the computer and call and let's see if that's a mistake that's been made by probation or if it's something else all right okay all right so yes, he's gonna have a seat Thank in the box you. you're welcome we're back on the record in 2023 cr 4941 state of texas versus anthony woodard could i have parties um announce again please for state evan myers your honor defense john coons is mr woodard and you're mr woodard yes ma'am all right so uh the court wanted to know about the gang affiliation me and mr coons spoke with sergeant rodriguez from our office the uh defendant does show to be listed in text gang your honor that was based on Tattoos identified at the Bear County Jail and a denial in 2019, or an admission to being an ex-blood gang member in 2019, Your Honor. So oh. when he was arrested in 2019 and something, they asked him if he'd been a gang member. He said, I used to be a blood, basically. 
There's no current membership information as uh, reported to the court earlier when he's been in TDC, he has not been categorized as a gang member. He has not been segregated in any way uh, as a result of that. And, and again, sort of as a very telling thing, oftentimes when Anthony comes to court, he's wearing blue. And if he was a blood, he would not be wearing blue in the courthouse. There's, there's no way. Okay. All right. This is what the court is going to do. The court is going to find you guilty. The court will sentence you to two years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. And I'll request the therapeutic community. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, you signed it, the waiver of appeal. Thanks. So, yes, All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing, as I was telling everybody before, I don't have a crystal ball, but based upon what I'm looking at in the report and the evidence that I've received, I just don't think that you would be a good candidate. So I know anytime people go to prison, that's a lot of time. I know sometimes people want people to do more time than what I'm sending them to or less time than what I'm sending them to. But I'll review the case, weigh the case on what I see and decide on what a sentence should be. When you're released from prison, you're just gonna have to go on the straight and narrow because at some point you're gonna be a habitual offender and your minimum will be 25 years in the prison. You understand? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge.